What's up? This is Mike Gallo from Agnostic Front for the Raise Fist Podcast. Mike Gallo, Agnostic Front. What's going on? What's up? Thank you for doing this, sir. Yeah, welcome to my studio. Welcome to the, the life of Mike Gallo. So I want to ask you, you're a high flyer. You jump 10 feet in the air with your bass. You used to. You, you, <laughs> I still kind of do. It depends on the night. You, you've been playing with Agnostic Front for how many years now? Coming up on 22 years. Over 20 years with the Agnostic Front, and one day you wake up and you're a national artist. How did that happen? Hard work and dedication. <laughs> you know, honestly, uh, I've been doing artists since, since I'm a kid. Like, I've always been doing art, drawing characters and also graffiti and yeah. all sorts of stuff like that. You know, like I was, I was always very into graffiti. I never went out bombing really hard, but I was yeah. always doing graffiti art and making. You know, I loved it. I lived, you know, I mean, I mean, I, mean, I, I grew up when we'd walk into Pergaments and, and fucking steal cans of paint. Remember like, Pergament? Yeah. Is that still around, Pergament? Oh, I don't think so. No, Pergament had all the graffiti, like, uh, spray paint cans, right? Well, they just had regular spray paint cans, I remember. Like, you know, like, back then, there were no, like, cap, different caps and all that shit. You had to go to, like, weird stores and look for, like, different type, kind of caps. Like, I, okay. you'd, I remember that was, like, the thing. Like, any kind of store you'd walk into... You pop a can open, any kind of like aerosol type of product, you know, like to see what kind of um, different caps you can get out of it. You know, they didn't sell them like they do these days, you know. So now they sell them with different colors? Well, like, no, nah, what they do is, I mean, there's different pressure cans, you know, there's high pressure, low pressure, and then there's also different cause skinny caps, there's fat caps. It's, it's like, like, I never remember that. You have to like make your own. The evolution, right? Yeah, yeah the ev- evolution of graffiti has been like, I mean, it's insane. Like, How'd you get involved with like the punk rock and paintbrushes thing? That came about for I have a friend of mine, Todd Huber, who actually just shot the last Illuminated video we just did. Punk rock and paintbrushes got involved with punk rock bowling, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to show a piece in there?" Is there a different feeling you get from playing on stage with a New York hardcore band, a a small art show with people looking at your art on walls? It is, yeah. I mean, it's definitely different. I mean, playing in front of people, screaming your lyrics and all that shit, that's a different high, you know what I mean? Music and art has always been my life. That's like, that's what I do, you know? Like, how I've actually made it my job. But, I mean, is it a different feeling? Do I get... I guess it is. This is, just takes me, to like, this is more therapeutic for me, you know what I mean? Like, this like just takes me to another place or just, like, when I come home from tour... Like, I don't really want anything to do with music. Sometimes I don't even listen to music because I'm just like so fucking burnt out on it, you know? So you just go into your shed and you just do art? Yeah, you know, do my thing, hang out, smoke a couple of bowls, <laughs> just get into a zone, you know? And then just, you know, sometimes it flows, sometimes it doesn't. On those nights it doesn't, I turn on the TV and I'm watching boxing or MMA. <laughs> That's it, you know? What inspires you for some of your pieces? I see an agnostic front, a regular soul. I see yeah. old New York lit up. I see prints. Like, where do you get your ideas from for your art? Just, like, stuff that's always influenced me throughout my life. You know what I mean? Like, growing up in New York, like, it was always very heavily... It was very graffiti. I mean, it was just, like... I just remember, like, as a kid, like... You didn't even have to do graffiti, but everybody had a tag. You know what I mean? Even though they weren't doing graffiti, everyone had a tag. It was just like, it was the, at that time, like, in like the late 80s, early 90s, it was just, it was that fucking big, you know, like, it reached that point where it was just like, such a huge part of New York culture, you know? So like, I mean, I just like, everything, like, all music, like, I mean, Prince, you know, I always thought Prince was great, you know? Um, pop so, art. You know, I, I like a lot of pop art, and, um, you know, especially art, anything that stands out, like, like, for me, like, if I make a piece... And I don't, like, enjoy looking at it, and I'm just like, you know, I'm just like, I, I can't. I just fucking just scrap it, you know what I mean? Like, I do the up. same thing with music videos. Like, if I if I don't like a scene, or if I don't like a video, mm-hmm. I, I don't want it out. Yeah, because it's just like, you know, you can't fucking hit a home run every time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I mean, I think pretty much for what I do, I, I know how to make what I do, you know, I, I know how to make it look my style and I make, make it pop, like, that's what I do. My stuff, I make it pop out. I, make, I like eye candy, you know? And um, I know I, I have the talent to do that. What influenced me is just, like, what, what what I see, you know, what I've been around, what I grew up with. I noticed Goodfellas. I noticed Big Lebowski. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bought the Classic Big Lebowski. Movies. 
11 by 11 piece. The dude, Ray Liotta, right? Mm -hmm. is, is that from Goodfellas or is that from another movie? Uh, that was from Goodfellas, yeah. Okay, because he has the bowling yeah, shirt on. I think, was, yeah, I think that was Goodfellas. Yeah, is that sure. a drum seat? That is a drum head. Drum head. Yeah. I mean, whatever like, whatever one's like uh, my drummer or anybody I'm on the road with, I'm just like, hey, if you have any, any leftovers, just like, the ones that did. Because usually drums, because they only last so long. They throw them out. So if they throw them out, you take it? Yeah, I take them just do the lot work on them. That's sick. Why not, you know? Fuck it. Paint on whatever the hell, you know? And, and, and it works because it's, it's part of, like, what I do, you know? So it, really, it just kind of intertwines, you know? It's almost like a natural process. You go on tour, you get your equipment, and then you just paint over it. It's cool that you can make it, like, a monetary lifestyle. Your second income, which is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, it, I got to tell you, it's a fucking hustle. You know, like, uh, even, like, this month, I was like, whoa. Like, I was like, wow, I'm fucking broke, you know? And I just, like... <laughs> I don't know how. I guess just being home. You know, it's, it's tough because I've been on the road to haven't been able to make much art at the time. And since I've been home, I've been home for like maybe a month or so. But I had a really hard time really being able to just get into the zone. You know, I mean, like um, my daughter had so many days off of school and I was with her a lot. And it was just hard to really get rolling. But once you kind of get rolling and a few commissions come in, you start posting more stuff you're doing. And then like, you know, more... Yeah, it picks get, up. Get, it picks up, you know? But it takes, like, to get that momentum going, you know? Like, so I find it kind of hard when I'm on the road to kind of keep it going. I tried it with social media and stuff, but, you know, old guy in technology works, you know? Uh, like, I, I, you know, I kind of, I kind of somewhat do my thing, but, like, it's, I just. You're doing it, I think. It's rough, you know? It's hard, you know? The algorithms and all that. It's, but you know what? I feel like you establish yourself as this artist now. And now you're nationally known with this. You know the the various gallery shows that you did. I know you did yeah. something with Charlie Tuna. Great dude. So you're stretching out into the hip hop. Yeah. yeah. And into different genres of music, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we mean actually Charlie, we were talking. We haven't really been able to get it together, but um, we were um, thinking about doing a little something together. He's like, oh, I gotta call you, but he's like, he goes, he goes, one day I'm gonna surprise you with a phone call. You know, he's like, I really want to do something. Like, because he wants to intertwine the hardcore and the hip hop type thing together, you know, like, and with the music and the art and just try to do something. Who would want to do anything with Charlie? Charlie's just fucking, he's such a great guy, you know? That would be sick. Yeah. What do you see yourself in the next five years with the art? It's got to be bigger, you know? Making bigger things, like more stuff like the table I showed you, stuff like that. I spilled uh, Tito's all over. Yeah. All right. That's great. $5,000 art piece. I ah. spilled Tito's all over it. That's all right. It's, it's epoxy. But epoxy, it's dude. Nothing. This episode's brought you by Epoxy. Yeah. Saving yeah. art since uh, today. How do you describe your shed? It's like a safe space? Safe haven? It's not safe at all. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you think about it, I got a heater next to the fucking spray paint cans, and uh, we may blow up at any minute. That's I got crazy. sores and... <laughs> All sorts of crazy shit. So yeah. I would definitely wouldn't call it a safe space. This is just, this is a, my, my, my little place to get away, you know? My wife, she works. Yeah. So she's got to get up early in the morning. I'm still like a nat, night owl. I come out here a couple of nights. I get, not, not every night, but like, you know, yeah. most nights and just um, come out here and just do my thing, you know? Like I, like I come up with the ideas during the day and then like you just really create at night. I don't know where it is. It's a weird thing for me. I even yeah. even even with music I mean like writing lyrics and stuff like that like like two three in the morning like the fucking melody line comes to you like this late at night I don't know it's a weird thing I don't know how does your wife feel about being with a rock star I don't know she definitely doesn't consider me a rock star <laughs> she just enjoys getting rid of me fucking every now and again you know <laughs>